Welcome, travelers, to Ferry Road. Topsham, a poor town, was once a center for trade and shipbuilding due to having a sheltered harbor on the ex estuary. Upon the countless ships that were built here, there is one ship that would leave such a mark on the shipwrights and those who continue to hear her tale. The HMS Terra. It was March of 1812 when the Royal Navy sent a commission to the Topsham boat builders. Three vessels were to be built, all Vesuvius-class bomb ships. The HMS Vesuvius, the HMS Beelzebub, and the HMS Terra. Construction of the Terra took place here at the Robert Davy shipyard. The Terra was free-masted, 31 meters long by 8 meters wide, and weighed in at 322 tons. Over the Terra's lifetime, she would go on to have several refits, gaining several more pounds, but I must stop there as it is most ungentlemanly to mention a lady's weight. It was the 29th of June 1813 that the Terra did leave the waters of Topsham. The Terra headed to Portsmouth, where she would be fitted with rigging and ordnance for war. Upon the 7th of October 1813, she set sail across the Atlantic. During the campaign, the Terra struck fear into many an enemy vessel and fought. On the 13th of September 1814, the Terror, along with a fleet of 19 other ships, failed to take Fort McHenry from the Americans. Despite 25 hours of mortar bombs and rockets, the successful defense provided the inspiration for the poem of the Star Spangled Banner. Post-war, the Terror would go on to become a ship of exploration. A combination of her design and sturdy strength made her the perfect fit for the new uncharted voyages to the polar regions. Now I must tell you about Samuel. He was one of the shipwrights who put his hand and heart into crafting the Terra. Much like a parent, he was forever keeping up to date with her voyages. The Arctic explorations of 1836 to 1837 gave Samuel pause as he read of her perilous voyages. Sightings of icebergs 300 feet high and thick ice intent on crushing her timbers to splinters. But endured the Terra did. And yet Samuel, although relieved, found himself increasingly shaken. Proudly he would tell others of her scientific achievements in the Antarctic explorations of 1839-1843, recording scientific firsts in magnetic observations. And so we come to 19th of May 1845. The HMS Terror set sail with the HMS Erebus in search of the Northwest Passage. The expedition was led by Sir John Franklin, commanding from the HMS Erebus, and Captain Francis Crozier, commanding the Terror. A combined crew of 129 men, a dog named Neptune, and a monkey named Jacko, would never be seen again. In the passing years, Samuel grew anxious at the lack of news, and she did haunt him so. He dreamt of an endless sea of white, cracking and biting him. He would wake up not in a fever, but cold, like he'd been pulled under the infernal ice sheet itself. Winter came to Topsham, and Samuel walked between dreams, and through these streets, and out amongst the frozen reeds. For they found poor Samuel, frozen amongst the ice. As for the terror, well, she was only found as recently as 2016 in Terror Bay. So take care of your mind and soul. Take heed that there's always someone who can listen to you. Better still, don't walk down there. <laughs>